Hey y'all, it's Nick from Undefeated Productions, and welcome back to The 3-2 Pitch, our podcast where me and Drew are going out and talking about things around the world of baseball. Before we get started, as always, we got to get some inspiration from the man, the myth, the legend, Drew. What's your inspiration today? How you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. It's, it's such a wonderful day. I'm not an A's fan, but I'm really proud of, of the green and gold. They, uh, what a series that was. Oh, God. And, and I, have to, I have to say, those were some of the most exciting uh, three-game series I've ever seen. The intensity, every pitch mattered. And then just the whole factor of no fans in the stands and the, the sounds, you know, it, it really started to come out, especially uh, during the game three of the Oakland White Sox series when Ramon Lariano was caught on the mic saying how effing fast uh, Luis Robert was. I don't know if you caught that. Damn, you're fucking wrong. Um, but it was a, it was, it was a, kind of went viral. And then, you know, the, all of the bat flips by Fernando Tatis Jr. And then Marcelo Zuna taking the selfie after hitting the home run. It's, uh, it really has been exciting. Now that we're through with the first round, we've got some incredible matchups in this divisional round, and it just continues starting on Monday. So I'm pumped. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, we got some crazy, crazy matchups. And ironically enough, divisional series, we got lots of divisional matchups, you know, between divisions. So it, they named it very well here. So, again, before we get started, hit that like button and subscribe. As always, we're working our butts off trying to get to you as many of these as possible. Whenever we have time, you know, we're throwing it in. We're getting some recording time in. And, you know, getting them up for you guys. So hopefully you guys are enjoying it. Alrighty, so we're just going to start it off reviewing our predictions for the American, American League wildcard series. And, you know, some of these we predicted right, some of them and I predicted terribly wrong. And, you know, to be honest, I predicted a lot of series wrong. And, you know, that's, that's more of my modern age of baseball. And there's a few things to consider on talking about in each series. And, Drew, if you want to chime in, if you have something to say about any of these series, go ahead and do it. You know, I'm going to just kind of roll through here to speed things up a little bit because we, we tend to talk a lot sometimes. But starting off in the, uh, with the uh, Rays and Blue Jays, you know, I said exactly the Blue Jays, great time to get your toes deep. You know, get, get a little postseason experience for all those youngsters. The Rays swept the series 2, two to nothing. Glasnow, Snell, dominant. You know, the series worked right up to the Rays' perfection right there. And just, just to add on that, it's a classic case, and we'll talk about this a little bit with Cincinnati in a moment, where the, play, the playoffs are different. And in the postseason, when every at-bat matters and every pitch matters, uh, sometimes people rise to the occasion – and sometimes it takes a year or two. And I don't think anyone was expecting Toronto to do any damage. And both of us did pick the Rays in this series. Uh, I don't, I think I'm a little surprised though how easy they got through. Um, but you know what? The Rays are scary. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. Yep, exactly. So moving on to the next series where my predictions first start to go wrong here. I, I predicted the Indians. I drew predicted the Yankees. And the Indian season was over about three innings into game one right there. Um, <laughs> Shane Bieber, let's just say that was a little disappointing to watch. And Garrett Cole pitched a fine game one. And, you know, I predict, predicted, you know, beyond Garrett Cole, if they could keep the game close in game one, I thought they had a chance. But beyond that, we saw them light up Tanaka. But, again, the bats were heavy. I believe it was a 10-9 game, 11-9, something like that. Very high-scoring game in game two, just like I predicted. Um, and, you know, we both predicted that. But uh, um, Drew wins this prediction. He predicts the Yankees moving on. Not much to say besides I was wrong there. Experience equals success, my friend. And sometimes, you know, you just get a gut feeling. Uh, I am very impressed with the Yankees. Uh, not only Garrett Cole, but the resiliency they had in that game, too, with a rain delay and with everything that happened in that game and for them to get down early big and then to come back like that, multiple occasions, big at bats. This team is dangerous. They are very dangerous. They have the lineup. The pitching is probably not where they want it to be. But again, 
moving forward, it's going to be a really, really interesting series coming up for them. Wow, will it ever. <laughs> exactly. And then now we're moving on to a series where we actually both predicted wrong. The Houston Cheaters beat out the, the Twins, surprisingly enough. And let's just say the Twins, I thought they had game one. And Sergio Romo, the former Giant, he came in and walked the go-ahead run. And then from that point on, I think all of the Twins' momentum just went downhill. I don't think they had anything going on that. The Astros sweep that series two games. And you know what? It is just... 18 games in a row in the postseason. 18 for the Twinkies. And I was, I was convinced they were going to win this series. They had the better team in my estimation. They had more depth, especially in their pitching staff. And they just fell flat in the big moments. They lost both games the same way. They made terrible mistakes, especially in base running. They made an error in game one that cost them the game. And then, you know, they couldn't get big outs when they needed to. Sergio Romo, you know, doing his usual Houdini act, but ended up walking in the game-winning run. And the bats, again, just went silent. And they really shouldn't have gone silent because the Astros do not have any pitching. The A's are going to kill the Astros, which we'll get to in a moment. And you know what? It's better this way. In a, in a way, even though we got this one wrong, I'm happier because the A's are going to take it to them. Yep. We'll talk about that series in a minute. I think I'm going to have that series a little closer than you do, but on to my third straight incorrect prediction here. I had the White Sox winning, and man, this is probably the best series, I think, of all of them. Without a doubt. Robert hits a ball 487 feet. That ball was absolutely killed. I mean, the, the, the White Sox look strong going into this game. Game one prediction, my prediction was looking fine. I was like, let's go. But, you know, I mean, I, I want the A's to win. You know, like I said, the hometown team, I have nothing against the A's. But, you know, I, there was just something, and you looking back at the past, the last couple of years, you know, the A's have lost, what, it was like 13 consecutive games, of, like elimination, elimination. games, yeah. and, you know, clinching games. They just have not been a strong postseason team you know, in so many years. And, you know, this finally breaks the ice for the A's. And, you know, I'm going to talk about that in a minute for the Braves. But looking past, I'm like looking at this team. This is a very, very hard series for the A's, in my opinion. This may wear you down a little bit. And this may, you know, this was just the beginning of a tough road in my eyes for the A's. The White Sox, again, very proud of you guys. And then the A's, again, coming out on top. This is probably the best series. Could have gone either way. Again, lots of missed opportunities for the White Sox. And again, I think before we're just doing this, every team that lost, it's because you missed those few opportunities with runners in the scoring position. We saw a lot with the Reds. You miss those opportunities in three game series, it's really going to hurt you. Well, I got to give you a little credit. Um, you did say Giolito was going to be dominant in game one, and that was true. Was he ever dominant? Oh, yeah. Uh, going into the seventh inning with a perfect game. Um, however, the, the White Sox lacked the pitching depth that they needed. And that showed up in game three when, they, when Rick Renteria had to mow through his bullpen to be able to get through that game with inexperienced young arms. I got two words for you. Liam Hendricks. Oh, my God. He threw 46 pitches in game two. Comes back and is throwing 100 miles an hour in the ninth inning. Perfect location on the black. This guy has heart. And you know what? I don't think it's going to be an issue because they clinched the game on Thursday. Now they've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They got plenty of time. Their series starts on Monday. Their rotation looks good. They've got more pitching depth. We'll get to that in a moment. I give the White Sox a lot of credit. They played a lot better than I thought they would. They are explosive. When you talk about Moncada, Robert, what a series of Bray you had. What a series Tim Anderson had. I think he set a record for hits in a series or something like that. Nine hits in a three-game series. But, but again, it, it ultimately came down to pitching. And when the moments got big, their, their arms got tight. Yep, exactly. Liam Hendricks, I think going out in game three, had something to prove after nearly costing, you know, the A's another, you know, 
elim- elimination game. They almost lost. They had bases loaded in the ninth inning, I believe it was. And they were sm- the White Sox were one swing of the bat away from getting needing three outs to advance to the next round. Again, Homestead alumni uh, Evan Marshall didn't look as strong as you know I hoped he would be um, as a Homestead student myself. But um, yeah, overall White Sox A's great series, probably the best. On to my fourth straight for incorrect prediction. That's going to be a theme of this. <laughs> and this one, this one's the Braves and the Reds. And honestly, again, talking about the missed opportunities, the 12th, 13th inning, the Reds just absolutely failed to bring in runs. It was in the, like early on with Joey Votto, second and third, and like the first inning in game one against uh, Freed, again, choked. We're going to be talking about the Braves a little more. I have a sneaky comparison for them I'm going to reveal you know moving on towards the later half of this video that I think uh, Drew might like a lot about this I think it's going to bring out something but the Braves move on to nothing the Reds their bats are quiet the Braves young pitching was stellar not they didn't score a run <laughs> and 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 game one was the chance for the Reds they had opportunities in that I think it was 13 or 14 inning game uh you know, they had runners on base all afternoon. I watched that entire game, and they just weren't – they just couldn't get the big hit. And then, yeah, you know, in game two, they just went quiet. I mean, Trevor Bauer was phenomenal. And, you know, the Reds are going to be a force. They, they, they are. But very similar to the White Sox. You know, they, are, they just weren't ready for the moment. And, you know, taking a slightly different uh, approach to that, and I think – the, what cost the Reds this series was not bringing in that one run or two runs they needed because I tell, tell you all the momentum just died after that game one. And ultimately after the Braves won, I knew the Reds were done. I didn't think the Reds were coming back. They lost all momentum in that series. Moving on to, oh, well, actually hit um, Drew's second uh, incorrect, incorrect prediction here, but my uh, fifth in a row here, uh, the Marlins uh, swept the Cubs in two games in uh, 2020. Man, is that an uh, interesting year there. I'm not surprised they never lost a postseason series in the history of the organization. Now, they've only been to the playoffs twice before this, but so far they are now 7-0 and in postseason series. There's something about this team when they get to the postseason. And the Cubs, you know, they should be ashamed of themselves. Just absolutely lifeless. You know, Ian Happ is the only run that they score in the entire series. Uh, a solo home run that barely gets out of the ballpark. But you know what? We shouldn't be surprised because the Cubs couldn't hit. We knew it. We, we only thought they'd win it because they were the Cubs and they had a little, bit, a little bit of experience, especially more experience than this young team. But when you look at it, you know, the Marlins' young pitching was on fire. They got big hits at big moments. And they've got confidence. They've got confidence. And while I don't think they have a chance in the next series – I would not be surprised if it goes to a game five. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I'll, I'll speak about this a little bit on the Marlins really quick here. The Marlins, they have nothing to lose. And I think that nothing to lose mentality is really carrying them right here. And we saw it in this series. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen on the next one. Finally, we're getting back on track with the correct prediction for this one. We got the Dodgers sweeping the Brewers two games to none. Uh, easy series for the Dodgers, just like the Rays. You know, this is a, a, like a team under 500 in the postseason. So, like, really, did we expect the Brewers to do much? I don't really think so. Kershaw, again, a game that absolutely does not matter for them. They're winning the series no matter what, even if they lose that game. 13 strikeouts, eight innings. Way to waste a postseason performance on a game that doesn't matter. Well, you got to give the guy some credit. He does look good. Um, now, they're saying he's in midseason form because, obviously – this is the first time that Kershaw hasn't had to go through a full slate uh, before pitching in the postseason. So that might, you know, play to his benefit. It obviously did. The Brewers had no chance. Uh, I knew it. You knew it. The Giants also wouldn't have had a chance. Uh, so I'm actually happy they didn't have to waste their time even going down to Southern California. I hate to say it. This team is winning the World Series. And that is the only thing that uh, makes me sad I don't want to say sad, but it makes me a little disappointed about this postseason. It's such a great postseason. It's, it's exciting. Some of it, in, in many cases, unpredictable. But this team is just too good. They are loaded. And they, you know, I almost feel like 
the fact that there are no fans in the stands, it helps them. I think, I think they felt the pressure in these, you know, elimination games that they've had against the nationals last year against the Mets a few years ago. Uh, you know, these, these games were either in, a, in, either in their home ballpark or their away ballpark because of the expectations that they had, I think they would feel it. And, you know, when you feel it in a baseball game, when you feel that tense stress, you can see what happens to teams. They fold this year. I, I don't, I almost feel like that even though they're the favorite, they don't have much to lose because there's no fans in the stands. Now that might change as they, um, as they now go to Texas, if they get into the NLCS, I heard a rumor. I think it's not a rumor anymore. I think it's, it's a confirmed. fact that there will be some fans in the stands. I don't know if that will make a difference, but this team is on a mission and they are so good. They're one of the best teams I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, for sure. And going on to the final series in the National League and the wild card series in total, we have the Padres and Cardinals. And again, we both predicted incorrectly on this one. We have the San Diego Padres advancing over the St. Louis Cardinals. Wow, Fernando Tatis has been electric this series. I mean, two home runs, Will Myers. I saw a thing on Twitter that said Will Myers becomes the second player in Padres history uh, to hit two home runs in a postseason game after Fernando Tatis Jr. <laughs> or like following Fernando Tatis Jr. I just thought that was funny. I was like, oh, same day, you know. But overall, this Padres team, again, nothing to lose here. They go out, beat the Cardinals. Again, we both have the Cardinals moving on, you know. I'm honestly not too surprised about this, but, you know, I didn't expect it. Well, great comeback after being down in game, uh, losing game one and then being demolished pretty much down for the count in game two and then coming back and then going ahead and taking game three to close it out. Uh, it's going to be a great division series that we'll talk about in just a moment. I'm, I, I am happy for the Padres because, you know, they've been a team in purgatory for years. And this is an opportunity for them. It's an opportunity to see if they can get their pitchers back, Clevenger and um, Le, what's his name, Lamet. Yeah, Lamet. Yeah, so it, it's a it's an opportunity for them to be able to uh, you know play in a in a meaningful you know a series that's really going to get them exposed because a lot of people are going to be watching this series you know this week you know nationally. So the Padres are going to get their kind of their their name out there. And I, and I think this is, you know, this is what it's going to be for the next, for the coming years. It's going to be the Dodgers and the Padres in the NL West. Um, you know, as much as the Giants say they, they want to be part of that, they're not close. But it's, it's the Padres and, the, and then the Dodgers and then the Padres. So it should be a fun series. We'll get to it in a moment. All right. So we're moving on to the divisional series, starting off on the American League, one of the better series. Again, all, uh, most of these series, divisional. So... Here we go, starting it off with the Tampa Bay Rays and the New York Yankees. Who you got in this one? So you did forget to mention that this series is going to be played at a neutral site in San Diego. Uh, so the, the Yankees and Rays will be in San Diego, and the A's and Astros will be at Dodger Stadium, which is a really interesting twist to these series. You know, AL East matchup in, a, in an NLS ballpark on the West Coast. It's going to be a little bit of a kind of, I think it's going to take some time for them to kind of get used to it. This is the matchup. And man, both of these American League matchups, they are just gold. Uh, I, I have to admit, and, and you know, as much as I like the Rays, as mu and I know you love the Rays, Nicholas. I know you do. And I know you picked them to get to the World Series. But I've got to stick with my original predictions at the beginning of this year. And I'm going to say that the New York Yankees are going to outslug the Tampa Bay Rays. It's going to be a five-game series. It's not going to be pretty for the Yankees. They're not, it's not, you know, every game is going to be a challenge. I do think the Rays are going to get off to a good start. I think the Rays are going to take game one because I think their pitching staff, I think they're just in better shape. Um, but Ultimately, the Yankees are going to outslug them because they are literally the Bronx Bombers. They are back. They, they, can, they can smoke the ball. And the other thing that's, that's going to play in the Yankees' favor here, and, and, and I may not have thought this would happen, you know, initially, is Petco Park has been playing like, you know, it's been a launching pad. Uh, I mean, if you look at the Cardinals-Padres series, all the home runs, 
uh, the ball flying out of the yard. I think it has something to do with fans not being there. I really do. Uh, it's going to play, you know, a, a short porch in left field down the line, you know, when you've got Judge. And also down the right field line is a short porch. When you talk about Aaron Hicks, you talk about Stanton and Judge, who love to hit the ball to the opposite field. LeMayhew. DJ LeMayhew. Uh, I just like the Yanks' offense in this series. And I know, the, I know the Rays are fundamentally sound. I know they've got the pitching. And I know that they can hit the ball with the best of them. And they, you know, they, they run the bases. They play good defense. They're just a solid team. They've got a great manager in Kevin Cash. But something tells me the Yankees are going to get through this in five games. Yeah, and, you know, like you, I'm going to keep my original prediction here, and I predicted this exact same matchup between the Rays and Yankees. And, you know, looking at this now, you know, I was watching this season play through. The Rays have absolutely owned the Yankees eight games to two in their ten regular season matchups. The Rays swept the Yankees in the middle of the season. So, again, these are all things that have to come into play here. They, the Rays actually swept the Yankees in Yankee Stadium. So, you know, they, these are all things to come into play. And, you know, looking at this, you know, I'm just like, – like you said, I'm big on the Rays. You know, what they do, their entire organization, their pitching. We saw what the Yankees, you know, gave up with uh, – without Garrett Cole on the mound. Even Garrett Cole gave up, I believe, a run – it's hard to compete with a team like the Rays. You see them just go out and destroy Yankees. They've, they've seen this Yankees team. They know how to get them out. And overall, the, the, the winning in the regular season is probably the biggest thing that contributes here. And to be honest, if this Yankees team, you know, hit uh, beat the Rays out during the regular season, I'd be picking the Yankees here. But, you know, watching the regular season matchups, you know, neutral site, the neutral site plays for the Rays. Granted, they don't have many fans in the stands originally. But, you know, overall, love this Rays team. Like you said, five games is not going to be an easy series for each team, but best series probably. Moving on to the other American League Divisional Series between the Houston Shears and the Oakland A's. We got. So while, while you say the Rays and Yankees is the, the best series um, of the DSs, I say that this is the most interesting series. I, I really do. And, and, but I do not think it's going to be a long series. I think I think the A's are going to handle the cheaters. I really do. I think I think you know it's time for reckoning. You know, as they say, you know it's time to uh, it's time for your beating, because this A's team not only did they get themselves over the hump by you know winning their first playoff series since 2006, but they hate the Astros. Let me give you a few names: Mike Fires. Ramon Laureano. I think the A's, honestly, I really do think they're on a mission to get to the ALCS. I've said it from the beginning of the year. They've got much more pitching depth. They've got, a, to me, overall, top to bottom, they have a better lineup. Doesn't mean that the Astros don't have talent in their lineup when you talk about Springer and Bregman and Correa. But I haven't seen much out of the Astros role players. I mean, I know Michael Brantley had a decent series. Uh, against Minnesota, they, it's not like they scored a bunch of runs, okay? Th th these were 1-1 one -one games going to the ninth inning. I think the A's are going to score at least four or five runs a game in this series, and I just don't think the Astros are going to be able to keep up. I see the A's winning this series three games to one. You know, maybe the Astros steal one um, in a close matchup, but the A's win this, game, win this series in four, and they head to the ALCS. Yep, and I believe I had the A's um, going to the ALCS, and I still do have them going to the ALCS. You know, like you said, you know, the A's have got past the hump in this. And, you know, this series is, like you said, interesting. And I'm, I'm looking at this com from a completely different approach here. I'm looking at the Astros and like, okay, well, they have something to prove here. They have this chip on their shoulder that is going to propel them. It's funny to see how Michael Brantley has the best, you know, postseason, best season out of all these guys. Came over from Cleveland 2018 and, well, didn't cheat. So he's obviously good. We know he's good. But, you know, the Astros team, I was just looking at this and, you know, thinking about this, you know, I had no six grades. So I was just thinking about this. And, you know, looking at these Astros team, they're going to try to win. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is a little more of a grind than you expect. I think now that they've won a series that they're, they prove like, hey, you know, we swept the Twins. You know, we were not supposed to win this series. You know, no one expected us to win this series. This might, you know, bring a few bats, you know, start to heat up here. Uh, again, they were gifted runs. So it's just a matter of can they score some runs. 
But, you know, overall, I do think the A's will hand it to them. The A's, like you said, have a better team. But, you know, watch the Astros. You know, if the Astros' uh, pitching staff can quiet the A's offense a little bit and keep the games close, the Astros do have a shot. But overall, I think in the long run, and probably more six games or five games, I do think the A's will win. But watch out for the Astros. I sneakily wouldn't be surprised if they somehow come out on top here. I've been wrong before. I probably am wrong here again. But watch the Astros. Everyone counted them out, and I think they're trying to count themselves in and need to prove that they're going to be here. And I might, might, might bring them to the World Series because, you know, it's 2020. Anything can happen. We see it with the Miami Marlins. Moving on to the National League and National League Division Series. This one we're talking about the Braves and the Marlins. You know, interesting series here. Interesting series. Who you got? Wow. It's hard to pick against the Marlins. <laughs> <laughs> they have 7-0 and lifetime in postseason series. But there's no way that they win this series. There's just no way. They do not beat Atlanta in this series. Atlanta, to me, another team very similar to the Oakland A's, on a mission to get past the first round. This technically still is the first round even though they got past Cincinnati already. I just don't see the Marlins, you know, with, an, with enough pitching, with enough depth. I mean, they're, they skin by against the, the Cubs, you know. It was, it was some timely hitting and good pitching. But I just don't think they can do it in a series. Um, I didn't look at the numbers, but I think the Braves handled the Marlins pretty well during the regular season. Six, six games to four. Six Braves. games to four. Maybe they didn't handle them, so – I, I see this being closer than, you know, maybe I initially would have thought. Um, I see it going five. The Marlins are, they are pesky. They are pesky. And, and the interesting thing should be, again, with the neutral sites, you know, what is it, what is it going to look like when they're in Texas, right? Is it, is it going to affect, um, you know, the way the ball flies? You know, both ballparks are definitely hitter ballparks. So, We'll see how that plays into this. Again, neutral site is a plus for the Marlins. No fans is a plus for the Marlins. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and go with experience here, even though, you know, the Marlins are 7-0 and career all-time in postseason series. And we're probably going to be sitting here at the end of this whole thing, and the Marlins are raising the World Series championship <laughs> trophy, and we're both going to say, what the hell just happened? <laughs> All right. So in this one, um, for me, again, like you said, the Marlins, if they to come out World Series championship, I'm going to just sit here and laugh. You know, I said it Tuesday. But overall in this, I do have the uh, Braves in probably four games here. I do think that the Marlins are going to go out and win game one here. I wouldn't be surprised if they went out and go win. I wouldn't be surprised if they go out and win two games and the Braves finally kick it into gear and win the last three. I mean, it's the Miami Marlins. And, you know, they're nothing to lose mentality. They have so many plus playing at neutral sites with, again, no fans in this one. But overall, looking at this Braves team, top to bottom, I'm going to get my comparison in the next one when I'm talking about them in the National League Championship Series. I'm going to make you guys wait on this one. Again, you're going to like it. That's why I know I'm going to wait on it. But I think this Braves team, young staff, if that gives you a preview on what I'm going to say on their comparison. But, you know, go, looking at this Braves team, I think the Marlins finally lose a postseason series. But, again, they got nothing to lose. So, again, if they win, I wouldn't be surprised. But overall, I do have the Braves advancing here. And just to add, I'm very impressive Braves bullpen. Um, very surprising. And good to see Mark Melanson, uh, you know, back in the saddle. Uh, that, that bullpen is solid. And, and you know, if, if they can pitch like that, um, you know, and shut down a team that doesn't score a whole lot of runs, uh, I, think, I think the Braves could – maybe even sweep here. And I'm not saying that that's going to happen. I do think it's going to be a long series, but um, you know, it could go that direction also. I'll add this. This could very well be a Braves in five games. You know, we saw it in another year. So if I'm just going to give out hints moving on, I don't know if you'll ever catch on to it. And moving on to the final series in the, in the divisional series, we have the Dodgers and the Padres, the final divisional series. They're all divisional series here. You know who you got here. Big brother versus little brother. Uh, I like the Dodgers. You know, I, I do. I, I think it's, it's been fun for the Padres, you know, all, the fist, all the, the fist bumping and the bat flips and the jumping and the, 
but it's it's ultimately the Dodgers' year, and they're not gonna. They there is no way that they're gonna let the Padres beat them, in, especially in the postseason. It's just not gonna happen. But you know, I give a lot of credit to San Diego. They really have gone for it, and again, things could you know could change if Clevenger and Lamette are back. You know, they have the offense to compete with the Dodgers. I just. I just don't see the Dodgers losing a series. I, I just don't see it. They remind me of the, uh, maybe this is a bad comparison, but they remind me of the Golden State Warriors in 2016 because they eventually did lose to the Cavs. The only reason they lost to the Cavs was because Steph was hurt and Draymond Green got suspended in game five. I think you were my student at the time, Nicholas. Remember that when I, when I used to watch these games? But that Warriors team, they were so good that they were nearly impossible to beat in a seven, a five or seven game series. You could get them once. You could get them once. You, you know, every, everyone has their day, right? Where you just, all the stars aligned. But I don't see a team beating the Dodgers three or four times in a series. I just don't see it. There's too much talent, too much depth. I mean, they are, they, they score basically whenever they want. Whenever, whenever they want to generate a rally, they just, they just decide to do it. And they've got matchups in their bullpen for whatever you throw at them. They've got depth in their starting rotation. They do have a great manager who I respect in Dave Roberts, even though he hasn't gotten his due. And again, they may benefit the most from the fact that there's no fans. No pressure. You know, it, they have pressure, but they don't really have the pressure of the fans kind of, you know, you know, when they'd get down in a game at home, the fans going quiet or, you know, when, if they're on the road, the crowd being so loud that they can't overcome it. Like what happened in Houston in 2017 um, or having to go to Boston, like they did in the world series in 2018 in, in a hostile environment, there's no hostile environment anymore. So it's really just talent against talent and their talent is better than anyone else's talent. Yep, and for this series, for me, it comes down to the pitching again. I just looked at a report. Um, Mike Clevenger and Lamette both played catch day, and they both are feeling great. So if they both come back healthy, I think this series had a shot to swing San Diego. But, again, I do think that the Dodgers will advance. Again, Padres, great season. Matter you, you guys did better than the Blue Jays. I didn't really expect you guys to get past the Cardinals. But, um, you know, the Dodgers, I really don't think they're going to lose here. I think the Dodgers can keep going. But who knows? The Dodgers have a history of choking in the postseason. And, you know, the Padres, again, they really have nothing to lose. And, you know, getting Lament and Clevenger back, Davies was pitched, you know, fine. Uh, Paddock didn't pitch the greatest against St. Louis. So, I mean, the, the Padres have the pitching if they put it together. You know, can they, though? Like, you know, the pressure against the Dodgers in the postseason might get to them. But overall, the Dodgers, I do think they are advancing here. I, it's hard to see them lose. All right. Thank you all so much for watching this, uh, th th this podcast. You know, we talked about the divisional series. You know, we got to cut it short. We, we might have gone into it a little longer. Again, we talk a lot. So come back next week. We're going to be talking about the championship series. You know, probably the World Series. We'll probably just wrap it up all there. And, yeah, Drew, you have anything final to say? I think you do have a little something special for me to do. Well, take a look at the scoreboard, everyone. You see the little scoreboard down there? So Drew's doing well. That's all I'm going to say. Remember, experience equals success. But I want to tell all of you, uh, thank you for joining us. And remember, watch the games, comment. Um, if any of you want to join the show, just, you know, contact Nick. Come on, join us. You know, we're going to be probably in about a week and a half once the divisional series wrap up. We're going to come back and we'll do our um, – We'll do our ALCS and maybe we'll do our World Series picks. Uh, you know, we'll revamp and we'll, we'll compare. But just remember, experience equals success. Yep. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.